Shalom Alehem. I am Messenger Daniel. It is in the name of Yahweh. Welcome back, Yahushua Ministries. Say Shalom Alehem. Peace be unto thee. The subject now is about Matthew 5 verse 17. Messiah Yahshua stated, Do not think that I'm coming to destroy and to abolish the law and the prophets, but I'm coming to fulfill them. For almost 2,000 years of religion deceptions, for thousand, almost 2,000 years, the people do not understand what the meaning of Matthew 5, chapter verse 17, when Messiah stated, Take not, I'm coming to destroy the laws and the prophets, not the commandments, but I'm coming to fulfill them. What is the fulfillment stand for? What is the meaning of fulfillment? Do not think that I'm coming to destroy, to abolish the laws and the prophet, but I'm coming to fulfill them. Uh, by our way, Messiah Yeshua never taken about take not I'm coming to destroy the commandments, but instead of the law. There is a difference between the law of Moses and the commandment of Abba Yahweh. For almost 2,000 years, the theologians, the philosophers, the Christianities, those imposters cannot be understand a simple verse. Do not think that I'm coming to destroy and to abolish the law, not the commandments and the prophet. That I'm coming to fulfill them. Most prophets in Christianity are confused between the law and the commandment of Abba Yahweh. The commandment of Abba Yahweh was speaking to Moses and Yahweh was written his commandments and his own favor gave to his servant Moses for anybody who lived on the face of the earth should be lived by it. But the law was taken from the commandments because of the children of Israel was keep on sin transgress the commandments. So they enforce the commandment with the laws because of transgression. The law was a temporary until Messiah Yeshua coming. That's why most people say they are not under the law, but we are still under the commandments. The laws and the commandments are different. Take note, I'm coming to destroy and to abolish the law and the prophets, but I'm coming to fulfill them. Verse 18 says, For truly I tell you, until paradise and earth disappear, not a smaller letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will be any man disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Not one child and one title will no man pass away. The paradise, the earth, and everything will pass away until everything is accomplished in the law. Besides, you are don't touch the commandments, talking about the law. This is a big confusion for almost 2,000 years. The theologian, the philosopher, the pastors and ministers, even they go to school, they cannot be comprehending. Matthew 5 verse 17. Take note, I'm coming to destroy and to abolish the law and the prophets, but I'm coming to fulfill. Messiah Shua don't say anything about the commandments. But now, on the verse 19 is what Messiah Gunnar Yahshua is going to say. Listen carefully. 
Therefore, anyone who sit aside one of the least of these commandments and teach others according will be called least. Now, Mr. Yeshua touched the commandment. He said, whoever teach the opposite way of this commandment, they're going to call least on the kingdom of Yahweh. He go further. But whoever practices and teaches the commandment of Yahweh exactly the way Abba Yahweh prescribe it, we call great on the kingdom of Yahweh. I will understand the difference between Matthew 5 17 and Matthew 5 19. Matthew 5 17, besides talking about the laws and the prophets. But in verse 19, he says, Whoever teaches, the opposite way, the least of this commandment, that in the commandment of Abayah, with the Ten Commandments, what they call least in the kingdom of Abayah. But whoever teach exactly how to obey and to observe the commandment of Yahweh, what they call great. Today I'm asking of you. Do you want to call great or do you want to call least in the kingdom of Yahweh? What they mean when Messiah Shua say you call you least or we call you great? What the difference between great and least? Least is a good for nothing. Those who are refused to understand because they don't have the spirit of Yahweh. Those who take the commitment of Yahweh as already nailed on the tree or on the cross. Those who think they don't need to obey the Sabbath day because Messiah Yahshua are already void or already nailed the Sabbath day on the cross as they say, but the cross doesn't exist. Everybody know the cross was being made by Constantine, the Emperor Constantine, who say he made a dream, he compared the world to a cross, yes, because he deceived the world. Everybody wore a cross. For what reason? For what reason you were a cross? Suppose the Messiah Shua would die on the cross. He nailed the sin of his people or the sin of the world on the cross. Can you carry that cross? If all those sin is nailed on this cross, can you able to bury all the burdens is nailed on the cross? Take a deep breath and take in to know exactly what is going on, how the devil has been deceived you. Everybody who call themselves a Christian, so-called Christian, there is no Christian on the scripture anyway. There is no Christianity or Pentecost or whatever. The commitment of Yahweh has given to anyone who lives on the first of the earth. A special to his people, the children of Israel. There is so many deceptions because Messiah Yahshua was already prophesied them in March 24, 24. He said that many false prophets and false Messiah with a rise will deceive many by the sign and wonders. Even the select one, not elect, Abba we do not elect, Abba we select it. Even the select one will be deceived if possible, if possible. But there will never be any possibilities for the select one to be deceived. But this is showing about a strong deception, strong delusions, deception upon deceptions. That's why I say many, many. That's why I see so many places, there is so many churches, so many pastors, so many ministers, so many self spoken prophets that do they teach exactly the commandment of Yahweh or do they do the opposite, do they teach opposite way? Because all those people are going to call lists in the kingdom of Yahweh according to Matthew 5, verse 19. Therefore, anyone who sit aside one 
of the list of the government. One, not two, only one going to call list in the kingdom of Yahweh. But whoever just exactly the package, when they call great, I want to call great on the kingdom of Yahweh. If you don't have that ambition, you don't have that desire, hey, I will give you some, I will share some with you. Because I better be fair and to be not among the best. And I love challenge. Anyone who wants to challenge me, they are welcome. Please call me at 786 210 0503. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to call me because I am here to answer your questions. If you want to challenge me too, your challenge is welcome because I feel confidence in the word of Yahweh. You might be not believe in him, but I believe in Yahweh, I believe in his words. And let's go ahead, one and one, two and two, no matter where you want it, and to see the differences between the spirit of Yahweh and your diploma, which one is better. He is very clear in the verse 17, Messiah talking about, do not take, I'm coming to destroy the law and the prophets, but I'm coming to fulfill them. Remember on the time of Leviticus, there is a temple, the temple was there for sacrificial of the priesthood, for atonement of sin. Abel was built his tabernacle there, but what was the meaning of the tabernacle? Why the law is there for, is because there is a promise for Yahshua to come. If Yahshua has to come, so now we no longer under the law, we are under grace, but why we are under grace? In order for you to be on that grace, you have to have a faith. If you don't have faith, there is no grace for you. Grace is only for those who have a faith, those who believe in Yahshua. But if you do not believe in Yahshua, you are on the curse. There is no grace for you. In order for you to have grace, you have to transgress something. If there is no commitment, you do not transgress anything. I remember there is a time I went to the post office. I went to send a scripture overseas to a person. Then the post office person, the clerk asked me, sir, it is fragile? I say yes. The person, the clerk said, but it is a scripture. I say yes, it is fragile. And the clerk said me, what is so fast not to be broken on it? I said, the Ten Commandments. She said, oh, I'm sorry. I said, it's fragile, but she want to ask, what is so fragile? I said, the commandments, not supposed to be broken, so it is fragile. So the coin commandment make it fragile. She said, oh, I'm sorry. I did not know. I see now you know. So the scripture, when you send it, you marry it. You will make sure you don't fall down because the common might be broken. Make sure you don't broken the commandments. This is the same thing today. There is so many confusion among the leaders who think they understand the scripture the same like the ancient Pharisees and the hypocrites on the time of Messiah Yahshua who are thinking they know everything. And the church will try to teach them the right ways, but they are refused to embody their spirit. That's the reason why the church will say, Blessed are the meek. So, why you have to be meek? Blessed are the poor and the spirit, for this kingdom are in paradise. The poor and spirit is people who really want to be sent, who really want to learn. Not to take them, they know everything. Nobody know everything. Only Yahweh know everything. Until we are here in this earth, we are here to learn. That's only one way we can learn. It's on this earth. The other side, there is no time to lose. That's going to be the real deal. But now is the time for us to learn. I learn every day from Abraham. I mean, not every day, every second. 
I learned something different every day. A day without learning nothing is a day waste. Because you must be learn something no matter big or small. If you cannot learn anything, you waste your time, you waste your life. It's a waste. Just like the political song, waste. And verse 20, Messiah Yeshua say, I told you that unless your righteousness surpass that the Pharisees and the teachers of the laws, but you will certainly not enter into the kingdom of paradise. Just like it was after the Pharisees called them blind, fool, hypocrites, and Pharisees. Just like you see, your surpass must be exceed those of the Pharisees or hypocrites. Why? Because they think they was doing the right thing because they was receiving those laws according to the elders' tradition, not according to the commitment of Yahweh. So they was believe in that we're doing just like today. There is so many people who serve the devil, who call upon Jesus or God or Lord. They think they're doing the right thing. By the time they're serving the devil, they don't even know that. It's the same thing today. Humanity has been deceived for almost 2,000 years of religion deception. When they tell you it is okay to disobey Abayawi commandments, the comments are already void. The comments are already annulled. The comments are already fulfilled. But there is a difference between the law and the commitment of Abayawi. Don't take my word for it. Read Matthew 5, 17. Try to understand it and then get the verse 19. And get verse 20 when Messiah Yeshua say, I told you that unless your righteousness, what righteousness mean? When you live in the right life, when you live in the work of Yahweh told you to do. Because Abraham was the one who gave power and authority to the Pharisees, to the teachers of the Lord, to the scribes. But he go after them because they twist everything in order for them to make their own gain. Just like those pastors today, those ministers today, they are twisting the scripture for their own gain, for their own advantage. Because if they teach you the truth, you are not coming back to bring them the money. Because the budget has already made next week what kind of car they're going to drive, what kind of car they're going to buy, what kind of boat they're going to buy. That's the reason why they refuse to tell you the truth. If they tell you do not commit adultery, and you know you are commit adultery, so you're not going to come back because you're going to take your pastor up and finger at you. The scripture says you should not kill. If you commit abortion or whatever pain control you take, you think the pastor talking to you, you're not going to come back to make a money in pocket. That's why they're afraid to lose their job. They're not going to tell you the truth. But I don't have no job. I have a journey. I'm a man on a mission. So I'm not afraid to tell you the truth. And the truth will make me free. And if you want to, the truth can make you free too. By knowing and by the same, take your time to be sent to the word of Abayawi. Don't take my words. The scripture I quote to you. Take a note and read them for yourself. And Abayawi will reveal to you the truth. Only Abayawi can reveal to you the truth. If Abayawi do not reveal to you, no man in this earth can reveal to you. You can go to school, you can spend years and years. But guess what? You're wasting your time. Only Abayawi must reveal to you what it is written. Because everything are nothing but parables. They are hidden treasure. You can receive that treasure only one way if Abayawi choose to give it to you. They say, as I say, your righteousness must be surpassed. Those of the scribe and the Pharisees, the teacher of the laws. That means if the Pharisees was 100,000 miles, you have to make 200,000 miles in order for you to enter into the kingdom of Abayawi. If your righteousness cannot be surpassed, those of the Pharisees and the scribe, you cannot enter into the kingdom of Abayawi. Your pastor has been lied to you, they give you false hope, false teaching. I cannot afford to lose the spirit of Abayawi. 
those pastors, as I say, they are afraid to lose their job. I don't have no job. I am a man on the journey. I'm a man on the mission. I'm a messenger of Yahweh, a watchman. My job is to, when I see the, the, the warning, the, the, the things coming, I have to warn you. Sound the trumpet, the shofar, let you know something is coming by warning you. You're doing something wrong. This is my duty, this is my blessing to you. But I'm not your pastor who will compromise the word of Yahweh for the sake of money, for the sake of the filthy locusts. I don't need a big bank account. What I'm going to do with it? Naked I'm coming and naked I'm going back. Yahweh, He is a provider. He has always been provided to me. For 14 years, I don't own a building. For 14 years, I don't believe in building. I am the temple of Yahweh. You are the temple of Yahweh. So those people who have a building, who have a church, they condemn business. I'm not in business. Messiah Shua instruct his disciple by saying, go everywhere in the world. As you enter preaching, saying, the kingdom of Abba Yahweh is at end. Therefore, you repent from your wicked ways. Repentance, it is the good news. Matthew 24, 14. The good news of the kingdom of Abba Yahweh must be preached everywhere in the world as a witness. Then, when, then the end shall come. Until that, you are wasting your time. He says, you are not going to come yet. People say, he is coming. Who is coming? Jesus might be coming, but Yahshua is not prepared yet to come in until the people acknowledge their sin, their wrongdoing, call him by his name, call Yahweh by his name, and obey his commitment. Maybe Messiah Yahshua might be on the way. Now, mm -mm, don't expect him to come in. Take my words. Everything must be established before Messiah Yahshua coming, coming to rule. Could he go come in as a king? Do you think all the mess around? Gay and lesbian, men and women, and people sin everywhere. Do we take myself going coming to that city world right now? No. Everything must be established as the beginning before the end. Just like John the Baptist was on the wilderness preaching what? Repentance. Make a way for Yahshua to come in. The same way he was at the beginning, he was the same way he's going to be at the end. People must be repent from their one way. When you see in this country, United States of America, and everywhere in the world, as Mr. Yahshua already prophesied, the same way he was on the time of Noah, the same way he came on the time of Lot, is going to be the same way. So what you see is nothing yet. He is the beginning of Jacob's trouble. That the same thing when you see a woman is in labor pain and yet the baby is not ready to come out. This is the same way humanity going to be suffering. Three quarters of humanity going to die because of disobedience. Only one third going to be survived about how we're going to purify them and put the pure language and them out and teach them the commandments. The same thing was happened on the wilderness on the time of Moses. This is the same thing going to be happening again. Abba is going to rescue them, but all of them going to die because of rebellion, because of unbelief. Let's go to Matthew 7, chapter verse 16. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deed and esteem your father who is in paradise. Somebody please. In the same way, let your light be shine. But those pastors don't make their light shine because they don't preach the good news. 
They lie to you about the commitments already done away. They lie to you about you don't need to keep the Sabbath day. They lie to you about pagan name, Jesus, God, or whatsoever it is. They say it's okay, but I'm telling you, as a watchman of Abba Yahweh, true Messiah Yahshua, is not. You've been deceived. As Revelation 12 now I say, the dragon, the serpent, has been deceived the whole world. And which way? By keeping Sunday as a Sabbath day. By calling Yahushua and the pagan name Jesus. By calling Yahweh on the title called God's. By calling Lord, your landlord, when Lords. Even now you go to Europe, people call the judges my Lord. Abraham, wife Sarah used to call him Lord, my Lord. So every pagan name they tell you is okay. But it's okay to say Pastor so and so, right? Pastor say and so in order to identify them. But they take call upon God without no name. So your pastor is your God. Your minister is your God. I don't want to be your God. I want you to know Yahweh as your creator, Yahushua, the one who can give you everlasting life. I don't want no thanks, no praise from no man. Because my journey is to let you know who to give you praise if you have to thanks, if you have to worship, not me. Yahweh use me but he is my creator just that it is your creator i don't want you to worship me i don't want you to praise me or text me give caesar what is belong to caesar and give to yahweh what is belong to abba yahweh this is my duty to take away what was taken away from abba yahweh to give it back to abba yahweh because those pastors those ministers their job is to empty paradise to fill hell but my journey, my mission is to empty hell and to fill paradise. That's the difference. They lie to you. If Messiah Yeshua is the truth, I represent Messiah Yeshua, I'm going to tell you the truth. You might be like it, you might be not going to like it. Messiah Yeshua said, in the same way, let your light be shine. I want the light to be shine. You can see it. They may see your good deed. What kind of good deed those pastors are doing? Explain to me. There is so many people on the Facebook, on the YouTube. They are blasphemy on the name of Abayawi. They think they can teach by the time they know nothing about the scripture. There is nothing wrong to be a teacher. But remember, you must be first slave in order for you to become a master. You can be a teacher, but in order for you to become a teacher, you must be student first and make sure you are a good student in order for you to become a teacher. Everyone can be a teacher. There is nothing wrong. Remember on the time of Moses, Joshua was a servant, a student of Moses. When Moses cannot go, who Abba will replace? Joshua. That's the same thing. If you take your time, you stay on the line. The second like when you go to the grocery store, you have to stay on the line to wait for your, your time to come. Next. Don't try to wash yourself. Maybe a away can give you the gift of the spirit. But by going to school, by having diploma, it means nothing. But the spirit of Abayawe makes the difference. Verse 18, for I tell you truly, until the paradise and the earth pass away, not a single judge, not a stroke of a pen will be disappeared from the law until everything is accomplished. Not the commandment, but the law. So today they say the law has already fulfilled. You cannot fulfill the commandment, but you can fulfill the law. You cannot fulfill the constitution. You can fulfill the law of the land. The law was taken from the commandments. Besides, we are talking for I'm telling you truly until paradise they call heaven and the earth 
we pass away not a child but a single pen. We know and say we see everything on the law as fulfilled. Why the law must be fulfilled? When we take the book of Matthew 7, verse 12, and everything then to do others as you will have them to do to you. For this is the essence of the law and the prophets. That's the golden rules. Don't do to anybody what you don't want nobody to do to you. This is the essence of the law, the transgressions, not the commandments. So that is the difference between the law and the commandments. For this is the essence of the law and the prophets, not the commandments and the prophets, but the law and the prophets. So you have to keep on in mind between Matthew 5, chapter verse 17 and Matthew 5, verse 19. The law of Moses and the commandment of Yahweh, they are not the same. Everybody taken, they talk about the law of Moses, but nobody say the commandment of Moses. This is the commandment of Yahweh. Big difference. The law of the land and the constitution of the land, they are different. Along the constitution of the United States has been exists since 1776. But the law they keep take from the constitution, they enforce the laws of the land. Everything they get from the land, the law of the land, they take it from the scripture. Everything they use for the land, they take it from the scripture. They use the scripture for their own gain, but they refuse to tell you the truth. If the commandments are already done, why they have to take the law of the land from the scripture? Why? So they've been lied to you, you never know that. When we take the book of Romans 3.31, he says, Do we then nullify the law by this faith? But no mean, no. Instead, we uphold the law. So if everything has to go according to the law, faith that doesn't exist. Because before Abraham, 430 years later, Abraham will give Moses the laws. But Abraham was already received a promise 430 years before. That means the promise of Abraham was received from Abraham has been nullified, has been null because of the law. No. What is the meaning of faith? Faith is the substance of pain. You cannot see. If you're not having faith in Messiah Yeshua, you can keep all the laws, even nothing. You waste your time. So this is the same thing the scriptures say in John 3 16. And until that, nobody understands John 3 16. For Yahweh so loved the world. What kind of love Yahweh so love? He said his only begotten son. If we are a son, a daughter, why are we asked to send his only begotten son? Question mark. But whoever believes, the key is, is to have a faith to believe in Yahushua. If you have a faith, you will never be perished, but have everlasting life. And when we take John 3 18, he says, Whoever believes in Yahshua will not condemn. But whoever not believe in Yahushua has already condemned. That's the difference. Because you don't have faith. You can keep the law all you want. But if you don't have the faith in Yahushua, you already condemn yourself. Because the substance is to have a faith on Messiah Yahshua. Can I make the law unified to you? No, absolutely not. But do we have to live according to the law or do we have to live according to the faith? If we have to live according to the law, that means the promise Abraham was made for only 20 years before he even taken to give Moses the law to the children of Israel, that means they, 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 that promise does not count no more. Because Abraham was saved because of faith, not according to the law. At the time there is no law. Are Abraham get saved? 
where there is no law, it was by keeping the law? No, by faith. Just start today. If you're keeping all the laws and you do have a faith in Yahushua, the one who died for you and God got that, it means nothing. You already contain yourself. Because Yahshua it is the end of the law. The tabernacle was Yahushua. It's the promise to come. That's why I was promised to Abraham. Who is the promise to come? Yahushua. Luke 16, chapter 17. It is easy for paradise and the earth to disappear. Then for the least of stroke of a pen to drop out of the law. Not the commandment, but the law. We say something about the law, not the coin. But today, because we are talking about the law, because the law of Moses was only temporary to till Yahshua coming. Because Yahshua fulfilled the sacrifice. We don't need those sacrifice no more. That's why Yahshua destroyed the temple. The temple was nothing but corruptions. Business. They start today, those pastors, those church today, as nothing but business. My house should be called a house of prayers. But you turn it into a house of den of thieves. That's why Yahshua now is the only high priest. You can connect it directly from Yahushua by having faith because he's the one who died for you. Those priests, you don't need them because they are not the thieves. They are those pastors today. They are, he destroyed the temple. Because I don't need this temple. This temple, I will destroy it and I will rebuild it in three days. But the high priest was so arrogant. They say, What? Yahshua said, I will destroy this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. They said, This guy is crazy. We spent 46 years build that temple and now you told me you're going to destroy it and rebuild it in three days. Yahshua said, Yes. They get all the knowledge, but the wisdom they get is a foolish wisdom because they do not understand. Yahshua was talking about his own body. Three days and three nights. I am the temple. I am the church. Not a building. I am. You need me. You don't need this temple. You don't need those teeth. That's why he destroyed the temple. That's why even today, the world still in Jerusalem. Those stupid people quite bad down to them. But it's a mockery. That's why you leave the world stand for. Why? Because the same corruption, those pastors, those business, because money exchange on the temple. Give the governor more money. Put more money on the high priest pocket. Just start those priests. That's why Mr. Ashwa destroyed this temple. He said, Now you come directly to me. In order for you to come directly to Yahshua, you have to have a faith, you have to believe in him. Not those pastors, they cannot give you everlasting life. They're a bunch of liars. They are a bunch of dogs. They back in but never have enough. They lie to you 24-7 just for the sake of the bank account. I don't have no bank account. I don't need one. Because I'm in the journey. I do not know how long my journey is going to be in anyway. But when you are, we want. When we take the book of John, 8 chapter verse 5, the law of Moses commands us to stone such women. Now, what do you think? They will stop the Yahshua. According to the law of Moses, if anybody commit adultery, that woman should be put to death. But guess what? It takes two persons to commit adultery. They make one. Where is the man? Why do only burn the woman? One person cannot commit adultery. It takes two persons. It takes one man and one to commit adultery. Why don't you bring the woman? And they're asking Yahshua, according to the law of Moses, not the commandment of Yahweh, according to the law of Moses, commanded to stone this woman to death. They tell, they tell Yahshua, about you, what do you think? They try to accuse him. But we say, Yahshua, say, if anyone thinking they do have no sin, this is the first to cast it. And he will sit down writing. And when he get up, he said, Woman, where are all those your accusers? She said, I don't know. He said, If I don't condemn you, let no man condemn you. Go and 
sin no more. That's the deal. I forgive you, I don't condemn you, but go and sin no more. Those pastors, are you read it? Those imposters, I'm talking to all of you. When we take Acts 6 verse 13, and they set up false witnesses who said, this man, who Paul, is always speaking against the set apart temple and against the law. Paul was if working for the Pharisees, the scribes. Paul was a seal for the law of Yahweh. Now he against the law. Tell me why. Because he was a witness for Messiah, Yahshua, not a witness to the law. You have to tell people about Yahshua. You have to tell people about the mercy, the love of Abba Yahweh. Messiah, Yahshua died for you, for me, to accept it as your Savior. We recognize him as his name, Yahushua, not Jesus. That's why Paul is a witness. You're talking about the law. You're talking about the death, burial, and resurrection of Messiah Yahshua. Three times a year, all men shall come before me, said Yahweh. Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruit. Point blank. There is no more feast. Three times a year, all flesh shall come before me, said Yahweh. Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruit, dead, burial, and resurrections. Be a witness for Messiah Yahshua. He died for you. He buried for you. He resurrected for you. This is the good news of the kingdom of Yahweh. Not about the law. The commitment is different parts. But if you are a witness for Messiah Yahshua, all them are going to fall because you're going to say, if you love me, obey my commitment. This is the word of Yahshua. When we take John 15, 14, Messiah Yahshua says one thing is very important. You are my friend indeed if you obey everything I command you to do. What is the opposite of friend? The opposite of friend is you are my enemy indeed if you are refused to do whatever I command you to do. But people do not understand. Whatever I say, bless be. The opposite is best is curse. Lock do not exist. Curse be you if you are refused to descend to the commandments of Yahweh. The same Paul who was working for the Pharisees is the same Paul and people say he preached against the temple and against the law. Why? Paul never ever charged himself. Peter never owned a church. Messiah Shua never owned a building. Big things about for money, business. Acts 18 verse 13, they accused Paul of persuading people to worship Yahweh in a way are contrary to our law. Not to the commitment, but to our law. Paul was a one of the Pharisees working for the Pharisees. And that same Paul against the law of the Pharisees. The same Paul in Acts 18, chapter verse 13, they accused Paul of persuading people to worship Yahweh in ways are contrary to our laws. Why? Because Paul was a witness. Paul was chosen as a witness for Messiah Yahshua, not a witness to the law of Moses. That's the difference. Acts 21, verse 28. Yelling, men of Israel, help us. This is the man who preached everyone everywhere against our people and against our law. And this place, and beside he has brought Gentiles into the temple and defiled the city part place. The same Paul who was working for the Pharisees and the scribes, the teachers of the laws. It is St. Paul who go against those law because those law was nothing but man-made and we still keep the same mentality of man-made tradition and set up to let Yahweh all Lord and with the word of Abba Yahweh. Woman 3 verse 31 
Well then, if we are on Fassa's fate, does this mean that we can forget about the law? Of course not. In fact, only when we have faith do we truly fulfill the law. In order to fulfill the law, you have to have a faith. But that faith is to whom? To Messiah Yahshua. That's why Messiah Yahshua says, if you have the faith of the mustard seed, you can tell the mountain to move, and the mountain will obey, and nothing will be impossible. Abraham will talk to Abraham according to Genesis 12 chapter. Go, leave your country. Go to a land I will promise to you. Abraham don't ask Abraham what is the name of the land. That's faith. Not according to the law, but by faith. You don't have to see in order to believe. Just like Thomas. Blessed are those who do not see, but yet who believe. What is the opposite of blessed? Blessed are those who have to see in order to believe. I want to make it clear for you to understand. Well then, if we are emphasized faith, does that mean that we are forget about the law? Of course not. In fact, only when we have faith do we are truly fulfill the law. Not the commandments, but the law. Woman 10, verse 4. For Messiah Yahshua is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Messiah Yahshua is the end of the law. Not the end of the commandments, but the end of the law. So all the righteousness must come for those who believe in Messiah Yahshua. The law can make you righteousness. Only through Messiah Yahshua you can be righteousness by having faith in Messiah Yahshua. For Messiah Yahshua has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all who believe in Messiah Yahshua are made right with Abba Yahweh. The law cannot make you right with Abba Yahweh. Only by having faith, by belief in Messiah Yahshua and his name, you can become right with Abba Yahweh. But the law himself, you cannot, because Moses has spent 40 years on the wilderness, he was only making like sacrifice, cover your sin. But Messiah Yahshua paid with his own blood for his sin. That's the difference. So Messiah Yahshua replaced the law because you don't need no sacrifice, no high priest. That's why Messiah Yahshua is the only high priest. You can go directly to Messiah Yahshua for forgiveness. He's the only one who can open up the door for you. Not your pastor, not your minister can open up the door for you. But by belief in Yahshua is the only way. Messiah Yahshua said in John 14, 6, I am the way, I am the life, and I am the truth. No man, no exception, no matter where you are, who you are, can go through my father, but through me. That means he is the door, he is the lock. He is the shepherd of the sheep. Without Messiah Yahshua, you can do nothing. I can do nothing without Messiah Yahshua. But if you think there is another way, I don't believe in luck, but good luck to you. For Messiah Yahshua has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all who believe in Messiah Yahshua are made right with Yahweh. Not the law, but those who believe in Messiah Yahshua. The law can make you right in Messiah Yahshua. The law can make you righteous. If the law can make you righteous, you don't need Yahushua. If the law himself can give you salvation, you don't need Yahshua. If the law only can give you salvation, you don't need Yahshua. If the law only can give you eternal life, you don't need Messiah Yahshua. The law can give you everything. But the scripture says, plenty pure and simple. Romans 10 verse 4. For Messiah Yahshua is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes in him. 
just have John 3 16 say, Yahweh so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. Whosoever believes and who and Yahushua will not be perished but everlasting life. And he say in John 3 17, for Yahweh do not send Yahshua to condemn the world, but through Messiah Yahshua, the world might be saved. He keep on going, say in verse 18, for whomsoever believes in Messiah Yahshua, not on the law, but in Messiah Yahshua, we're not going to be condemned. But whoever not believe in Messiah Yahshua has already condemned. Not going to be condemned, but has already Contempt because you not believe on the son of Abba Yahweh, the only begotten son, Yahushua, the one who died for me, for you if you believe in God Guta. Galatians 3 17. This is what I am trying to say. The law which came for only 30 years after Yah Yahweh made the covenant with Abraham. For only 30 years the law coming. After Yahweh made the covenant with Abraham, could not be cancelled for only 30 years later, when Yahweh gave the law to Moses, Yahweh will not be broken his own promise if we have to live according to the, the law. Because when the time of Abraham, the law did not exist. For only 30 years later, Yahweh gave the law to Moses. Do Abraham do not save? Because he did not know about the law, yes. Because in the scripture say Abraham is a father of faith. Abraham saved because of faith. Hebrew eleven. It's about faith. Because he have a faith, he leave his father household, he leave his country, he go to a land he don't even know. Yahweh say, I will make you a great father. I will bless. I will bless whoever bless you, and I will curse whoever curse you. Verse 18 goes on say, For if the inheritance depends on the law, then if no longer depend on promise, but Yahweh and his grace give it to Abraham. So if the inheritance depends on the law, then it's no longer depend on promise. If it depends on the law, because for only 30 years, Abaya will give the law to Moses when he was already promised to Abraham, that means Abaya can break his own promise. He's a liar. If the salvation depends on the law, but Yahweh and his grace give it to Abraham. By his grace, it's not because Abraham would deserve it, but because by his grace, he chose Abraham. By his grace, he chose me. It's not because I deserve it. It's not because I'm working for it. But by the grace and mercy of Yahweh, He gave it to me. Because He chose me. He called me. I don't choose myself. I don't choose myself. I don't go to school. But Yahweh teach me. He put His word in my mouth. I can teach the others how to worship Yahweh and the Spirit and the truth. Verse 19. When there was the law given at all, it was at because of the transgressions until the seed to whom the promise will fail has come. The law was given to Angel to Moses, who was the mediator between Yahweh and the children of Israel. Listen carefully what Galatians 3 verse 19 says. When there was the law given at all, he was had because of transgressions. Until the seed to whom the promise will fail has come, Yahushua. The law has given to Angel to Moses, who was the mediator between Yahweh and the people of Israel. Verse 20. A mediator, however, a mediator is a fool, is more than one party. But we agreement between Yahweh is one did not use a mediator when he gave his promise to Abraham there is no law there is no witness Yahweh will seal his covenant 
Abraham, I will make you a great father. I will bless you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. All the people on the earth should be blessed through you. That was a promise. It's not according to the law, but according to the promise of Yahweh because of the faith of Abraham. Do we have a faith today? You're talking about the law. I'm not living under the law. I'm living under the faith. I'm not walking according to the sight, but to the faith. I'm walking to the faith, not according to the sight. Faith is the substance for time to come. So there is so many translations. Verse 21, is there a conflict between Yahweh and laws and Yahweh promise? Absolutely not. If the law could give us new life, we could be made right with Yahweh by the sight. Listen carefully what Paul said. If then there is a conflict then between Yahweh law and the commitment of the promise of Yahweh, absolutely not. If the law could give him a new life, we could be made right with Yahweh by obeying the law. But the law cannot do it. Yes, Yahshua is the only one who can make it right with Abba Yahweh. Because all the law was explained, was explained 40 years, and all the prophets coming, they cannot make a wine with Abba Yahweh. Only Yahshua has to work in the world in order to make a wine to Abba Yahweh. We can get our connections. It's not the law. If the law can do it, we don't need Yahshua. Yahshua don't have to waste his time to coming back because we can save ourselves. Verse 22. Galatians 22. But the scripture has declared that we are all sinners. We are all prisoners of sin. So we receive Yahweh promise of freedom only by belief in Messiah Yahshua. According to Galatians 3 chapter verse 22. But the scripture has declared that we are all prisoners of sin. So we receive Yahweh promise of freedom only by believing in Messiah Yahshua, not by believing in the law. Only by believing in Messiah Yahshua. That's only one way your sin can be forgiven. By believing in Yahshua, not on the law. Verse 23, before the coming of this faith, Messiah Yahshua was available to us we are placed on the guards by the law. Lack up until the way of faith should reveal. So we was locked up by the law because of transgression until Messiah Yahshua come in. That was the faith, the promise Abraham was promised to Abraham as to become. Because of that, with our death, there is nothing we can do. The faith is in Messiah Yahshua. The price is on Messiah Yahshua, not on the law. Verse 24, so the law was a guardian Cool Messiah Yahshua came that we must justify by faith. Galatians 3, 24 says, so the law was our guardian, our what? Our master, our school master. Until Messiah Yahshua came that we might be justified by faith, but we cannot justify by the law. The commitment are different than the law of Moses. So that the law was our guardian, our schoolmaster, until Messiah Yahshua came, that we might justify by faith, not by the law. Verse 25, and now that the way of faith has come, we no longer need the law as a schoolmaster. Galatians 3 verse 25 and now that the way of faith has come we no longer need the law as a schoolmaster because of the faith is coming who is the faith Messiah Yahshua come on now 
Verse 26, for in Messiah Yahshua, you are all children of Yahweh to faith, not by the law, to faith. Galatians 3 verse 26, for in Messiah Yahshua, you are all children of Yahweh to faith, not to the law, but to faith. Verse 27, and all who have been united with Messiah Yahshua and baptized in his name have put on Messiah Yahshua new clothing on. Galatians 3 chapter verse 27. And all who have been united with Messiah Yahshua and baptized in his name have put on Messiah Yahshua new clothing. Not the law, but Messiah Yahshua. Come on now. Verse 28. There is no longer Jew or Israel or Gentile, slave or free, male and female, for you are all one in Messiah Yahshua. So when you talk about division, religion, color, anything, Galatians 3 20, 80, there is no longer. Jewish or Israelite or Gentiles, slave or free, male or female, for you are all and one in Messiah Yahshua. Verse 29, if you belong to Messiah Yahshua, then you are the two children of Abraham because of the faith. If you are, if you are belong to Messiah Yahshua, then you are the true children of Abraham. You are Abraham's seed, and Yahweh promised to Abraham long before you. My Israel brothers and sisters, I think this is a time for us to know the law cannot be saved. You. Only Messiah Yahshua. Is the end of the law. Your eyes not to be fixed according to the law of men. That's why Messiah Yahshua say in Mark 7 verse 5, because the elders, the Pharisees say, why do your disciples are refused to walk according to the tradition of the elders? Messiah Yahshua say, you hypocrites, the prophet Isaiah prophesies about you, and then do you worship me? We set the commandment of Yahweh in order to make your own tradition in effect. Full well, you know exactly what you are doing. You will set all the commandment of Abba Yahweh in order to make your own tradition in effect. Mark 7, 7 verse 9. Think about that. It's up to you, my friends. Yahweh love all of you. Abaya we have a policy. You don't want to leave no one behind. But you can leave your life behind. You can leave yourself behind by not obeying the teaching and not obedience to Abaya. We. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. My Israelite brothers and sisters, no matter where you are, may Abaya we bless all of you. May Abaya we keep you. May Abaya we keep a face shower upon you, be gracious to you. May Abba is fortunate upon you and give you peace. Be Shem Yahshua HaMashiach. Shalom Alahem. Until next time, I am Messenger Daniel. I say Shalom Alahem. Peace be in today.